Hello, everybody. Welcome to the new Kubernetes monitoring release. Our latest update introduces detailed Kubernetes monitoring views for improved resource management and cost efficiency. Key features include in-depth insights into namespace, pod, workload, and container performance, historical data analysis for strategic planning, cost tracking, and optimization guidance. Benefits for our customers include pinpointing performance issues origins, identifying key cost drivers and saving opportunities, utilizing best practices for requests and limits, 360 drill down capability extending to the container level. The upcoming releases will include the cluster and no detailed views together with a entirely revamped alerting experience. So now let's dig in, starting from this landing page for Kubernetes monitoring. Quickly, we click on cluster navigation where we see all the components, then workloads because this is easiest to start with. Give it a little second or two. And now I know that this particular workload gives you quite nice graphics to show. And here we go. Now on top, you'll be able to see the more static components as uh, ready replicas, pods, which cluster and namespace it belongs to. Below it, these are the time series for the CPU allocation in green, the orange dotted line for the CPU requests, and the blue line that, uh, that represents the actual usage. On the right, you see one more line, which is red and dotted, and this is the limits, which are set for memory only in this particular workload. Going down, we will see how we promote setting up requests and limits here and here. Additionally, we, see we provide it with cost attribution, CPU allocation, memory allocation, and total price that the customer pays for this workload. On the right, you'll be able to see the idle cost for CPU memory and total idle cost that the customer will eventually be able to save. We can click on a pod and see more or less the same view on a pod level. Here lies the container view, which provides us a 360 drill down capability throughout all of your fleet, which is fantastic and something that we didn't have previously because we were drilling down only to pod. Now, the container level is a little bit more sophisticated here, we provide recommendations for sizing, meaning CPU request sizing, CPU request, uh, CPU limit sizing as well, memory sizing for limits and sizing for requests. I'll provide you one example. Here we see that the current allocation is 12 gigabytes for the requests. We're using around 8.6, three of them. And the recommendation is that you can uh, just downsize it to 3.3 gigabytes. We again see the cost allocation and idle cost allocation. Going further down, if there was CPU throttling, some uh, restarts or uh, terminations, you'll be able to see them here. For this particular uh, container, there were no such things, so no data is shown, no logs, and no events either. Now, for the last minute, I just want to show you one additional play where you'll be able to see a crash looping pod. So let's start. You go from here, you identify a pod that it is crash looping. You check out the pod optimization view where it is constantly bursting for both CPU and memory, thus crash looping. When you go to uh, dig further, you'll be able to see all of the containers and see that the CPU requests are far too low and that the termination reason is um killed exactly because of these really low set limits and requests. And finally, our recommendation is to resize the CPU request to a far greater number and for memory, again, for, to a far greater number and get this crash looping part issue resolved. That was all. For more information, hashtag K8-monitoring. Please uh, leave us questions and feedback. Thank you.